You know there's a way you're proud to answer questions about God. And it's not everybody that is proud to answer questions about God. Few people just say yes, a lot of people get quiet. But my prayer today is that after this service, as from next time, when they ask, is God able to do it? You say yes. Why are you, are you saying yes? Why are you going to say yes? Because you're going to be a living witness. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If we agree. Now, I want you to understand. The agreement is not a problem. The problem is. Or can I start by calling it the process, the journey. The work. The obedience. That is where the problem lies. Nobody has a problem to agree. That's why we still believe that people alliance. Somebody can still agree with you today, tomorrow he will disappoint you, right? We always agree with what the word of God says, but tomorrow we still disappoint ourselves and disappoint the word of God. Today we still talk about the voice of God. The voice of God, everybody loves this God. Everybody loves him. Do you love God? Amen. If you love God, say amen. amen. We love God. But we have a problem. The problem is the disappointment onto the will, the force, and the instructions of God. How will this thing be done? The Bible says what we agree, right? Isn't, isn't it? And people keep on capitalizing on the word of God without knowing there's a lot of solution that lies with the word of God. There's no solution that lies with the word of God. Agreement, oh God, you say in your way that where two, of, two of us agree what thing shall be done unto us. You are blackmailing God with this word. Why can't you blackmail yourself with your rebellion? You can agree with God today, but tomorrow you don't want to hear anything. How can this be done unto us? Is it not God? We obey what he says. He has to direct you for something to start taking place in your life. Amen. God has to lead you for something to begin to manifest in your life. If we agree on something, yes, we have agreed that we are going to serve God. But are we in agreement based on obedience to God? Are we in agreement based on letting go of our pride? Letting go of our carnality to connect the spiritual realm? Letting go of everything that we think that we are made up of. Because as I know today, a lot of people according to them, they take going to church serious, but they never take God's instruction serious. You are here. If you are not, you are not going to speak like this. Most of you, you will take if you are going to visit us, I will need to go to church. What, what are you going to do? Let's say you have responsibility like singing, choir, leader. You go there. Uh, you know, you are serious about it, but you are not serious with the word of God every bit of the way that is said. Even if your whole word passes away, not my word upon your life. All these things that we strive to get, everything that we strive to achieve in life, this thing pass away. It's not a person where we leave them and pass away. But the word of God has to remain. The instruction of God. The word of God is you. The word of God is who you're going to become that you do not know. We are becoming what we already know. Why can't you go to this era of trying to become that which you do not know? If I can put it in the area of becoming the faith that God has called to be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When God says he will do something, don't jump. Ask yourself, how is he going to be done? Because the prophet can still come and prophesy to you today. God says he will prosper us. God says he will make it in the future. Hey, thank you, Daddy. I have been waiting for this message all the rest of my life. You have been waiting for this message. Don't wait for mercy. Anticipate for instructions. It's very not nice when a Christian will take going to the church serious, but God's instruction, they do not care. 
Then I ask again, what are you doing in church? How will things be done upon two people that have agreed? It will be done by our Father in heaven, isn't it? How is it done with them? There has to be a movement so that there will be a manifestation. It's a composer. I still want to remind you, is it not when you walk, you see money in your bank account? Huh? I don't want to go to the other way. So I'm going to be nice today. Is it not when you walk, you see money in your bank account? Is it not when you obey, you see God in action? Praise the Lord. I keep on asking you a question. How can you, how can you, how can you eat food without going to the kitchen if you are staying alone in your house? How can you manifest without getting to a point, a particular place, a venue where God is directing you to get to, a level where He wanted you to get to? How do you think that something can manifest? All of us were here, isn't it? Is there any clothing shop here? But when you get there, you see a clothes to buy. I'm talking about clothing shop. Agreement is easy. But the voice of God can be difficult to them that are proud, to them that are impatient, and to them that doesn't care about their lives. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you know that obedience makes the parents happy? You are growing up in your parents' house, and your father tells you what to do, your father tells you what to do, you do it. They become what? Even if they are not telling you, they become happy with you. Can I still ask a question? Don't you know that obedience makes God happy? When he tells you what to do. How many of us, I know that we're not good enough. How many of us are making God happy? You think you are singing, dancing. Hey, they say when the praise is go up, his glory comes down. There are most of people that can sing and sing, God will never come down. God cannot just come down when you are singing praises. He comes down when you are obedient to him, then added with praise. David is a man of my heart. Do you know that I can sing praises without obeying God? Nothing will happen. When the praises go up, His glory comes down. He will not come down, He will not come down for all of us. Singing, praise it does not manifest God. The same obedience is better than sacrifice. Agreement is easy, but the voice of God is difficult. Narrow gate is not the gate that is being seen. Narrow gate, Jesus Christ was using narrow gate to describe the process, the instructions, and the guidance of God. When we say narrow gate, it's not the, it's, it's not the narrow gate that you see, or wide gate that you see. The narrow gate is describing the word of God, the will of God, the processes of God. Spiritually, it's easy, but physically it's difficult. When they keep on saying, let to grow your spiritual life, feed your spiritual life, so that it can be easier for you, but when the spiritual life is not growing, a lot of Christians and some other they come by shock. And there you are, you still take going to church seriously. Going to church and taking it seriously is a waste of time. And I am not going to be intimidated to say it. Did you hear what I'm saying? I'm not going to be intimidated to say it. Going to church without a real is a waste of time. As I proceed, I'm just going to give you one single message here. If you don't want to listen to what God say, then stop praying to Him. Okay, you don't call it away. Give me the spirit of what? Prosperity. The Spirit will come and tell you what to do. Every prayers are being answered. But the answers 
are not being accepted by the Christians. Do you know that? Most of our prayers are being answered. But the answers are not being accepted. To some of you, the answer is unacceptable. No. The problem is that you refuse to accept the answer. The answer to your prayer can come as a calling. The answer to your prayer can come as telling you what to do, an instruction. No. And you pray now that you want your way to be prosperous. You are praying now that man is what you're going to become in four years' time. The instruction that was given to you many years ago while we are praying in the presence of God. Listen, we have agreed to God, isn't it? Hello, hello. Nobody called you here, right? We agreed to God together, isn't it? And whatever we ask, it shall be done unto us by our Father in heaven. But for it to be done, it has to be inside within the will of God. Now you are here. Can we still go back five, six years ago? Because this man, you still have time to amend a lot of things. Even if there are a lot of things that have been wasted, you can still start afresh. The voice of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I need a divine protection. I need divine protection for you not to perish, for you not to die, isn't it? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for my financial health. For you not to lack, isn't it? Oh God, I want favor. Isn't it? For everyone to live with you, right? And God will come down. A, B, C, D, do this. It was easy for you to pray. It was easy for you to agree by coming to church. It has been difficult for you to obey. Because most of the instructions and prophecy were unacceptable to you. Prophecy that God gives to most of us is an answer to your prayers. But it requires you putting a work on the ground that will be a fruit for harvest. I hope you have been quiet like this ever since I was never around. Huh? I hope you have been quiet like this. I'm not here to condemn anyone. But I'm here to tell you the truth. It will be done. We believe that it will be done. But we never believe in what has been said by the voice of God. That when you ask to return, but you don't have to believe that that word that has been given to you is one of the trial and test that will lead you to the next level of high life in godliness. Most of Christians that are struggling today is not that God did not answer their prayer, but they never accepted the answer. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Most of the Christians that are struggling, is it today? Even you, most of you that are here, you are struggling, thinking that your prayer will not answer. Your prayer will answer long time ago. But the, the instruction was unacceptable. God comes with answer to your prayer, telling you what to do. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I love you. I accept you. Be my God, right? Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I love the word of God, right? Father, your word said that whatever we ask shall be done. Father, please bless me. Change my life. Do A, B, C, D. Do one, two, three. In the name of Jesus Christ, prosperity is my portion. That prosperity, the answer. A change in your life, the answer. But it's an obedience that will cause those change. That will cause those prosperity. That will cause those healing. I still want to quit you by telling you, never you believe anybody that says there is no anointing in every church. Anointing is not here. <coughs> anointing is within you. Mm. And it's being activated when God appears. Mm. I'm no longer afraid and I no longer care. If you can go out and say there is no anointing in every one, I don't care. I'm not 
Go and keep on saying it. You know why? Is it that you are ignorant? You are irritated based on the will of God. Within the will of God. You know when I look at some of you, if I start calling you out, I start reminding you how you miss the answer to your prayers, you will start shedding tears in it. All of you are here, right in front of us, okay? You prayed a prayer, it was answered, and I gave you instruction. Oh, you want me to tell you? No, you know that time you're praying. And God said, if I tell you that, you will not to do it. Yeah. Don't come to answer your prayer, also with a test. Yeah. Let's say you were in your room, I never saw you for the whole week, right? Yeah. You are praying for prosperity, financial prosperity in your house, right? Yeah. And now you came to church and said, I have God revealed to me while you're praying for financial prosperity in your house for the whole week. And now God said, for that prayer to be answered, when you get your salary, give us and give the church five thousand. Will you not do it? Because I confirmed what we are doing without being seen. You will do it. But now you're praying for prosperity. I just look at the point you are like, hey, man of God, it's difficult. <laughs> you really tell me this difficult, what do I do? I walk away. Instruction to motivate you. I no longer have the grace. Because I don't want to add onto what God has said. Because I am the one who will be in power. And then we are. Today we are struggling. Today we are still be, we are still blaming God. Why is it that God is not remembering me? We are was the instruction that was given to you. Where was the prophet that was said over your life? Right. How were you directed to serve God in your ministry? Right. Can you remember all this? I start saying, why is God not remembering me? How have you backslided in the sacrificial life that you're living for God? How have you withdrawn from your contribution based on the work of God? Right. How have you decided to impress yourself before impressing the kingdom of God? Most of you withdrew from what you are doing that was giving her. Today, your peace is no more. Uh, and then you are looking for a way to entice yourself to, for, for you to destroy. Listen, eh? Listen, when your peace is gone, you can never destroy yourself. Listen, if you are not having peace, then no amount of destruction can stop you from not having peace. What do you need to do? Go back to God and stop that useless destruction. What do I used to do because of God? You pulled out. You pulled out because your life matters. When God answers your prayers, He can never answer your prayers based on your life matters. He answers prayers because He is the way it matters. An absence of peace. An absence of peace is very dangerous. Because no matter whatever you think you have, you're confused. Okay. If you have a car, house, too much money, you're confused. Okay. Why is it that most of the churches, you see people that you don't even have anything and you're bragging? People that have cars, that good mansions entering the church, they are looking for solution. They have money, they have cars, they have houses, but how will I fix my life? Yeah. We pray to God. But if you are not willing to listen to God when He speaks, do not pray. Because through your prayers, you receive an instruction. Which you know, which will eventually be unacceptable to you. Imagine that praying for protection. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for divine security. And now, I didn't even know what you're praying. God says you should fast for 14 days. Hmm? Hmm? I thought it's about that to put up with. I want me to pour. pour. That is only for you. Pour it on you. It's only for you that I command it to be anointed. You think when they anoint you, you are protected. Excuse me. What is this living? What is this living? Human mentality. 
May the Spirit of God has put in you to dominate that flesh and blood. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God is not doing anything, isn't it? Hello? He's not answering your prayers, right? God is not the God that answers prayer, right? Can that word of God lie? The word of God cannot lie. God himself cannot lie. But our problem, you have been praying for six years. One word that is enough to expand you for that six years, you did not follow and you are still praying. Amen. Most of us, based on our journey with God, there are stages that we realize that some prayers are not necessary. That was the prayer. And there you are, you say because you want to prosper, you want to pray for 40 days, first 40 days, you are punishing yourself. That is called self-punishment, you are on hunger strike. You start fasting when you are not being told to fast. You start fasting out of selfishness, but because of selfish reasons. And all these people, you distract yourself because your peace is gone. Go and carry your peace and stop that distraction because you are still wasting your time.
our suffering to be is because of ignorance. Pride, 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 pride. 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 You rather choose to be sick and on medication than having a pride in your life. This name, you, know, you better prefer. It, it, it's, it's better for you to do sickness, name, live on medication, than living with pride. There are people on medication the way you are held right now, they are driving from Africa and we're here, go. Ah. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, why did you forget me? Come and tell me how God has forgotten you, and I'll tell you how selfish. Arrogant, and how you have been wallowing in pride because you think your common sense is enough. Common sense that will not even go with you to the other side. Common sense that will enter the grave. Grave you die, sense dies. If you stop breathing, the sense is gone. But you can still stay without breathing. The sense of God is there. Is it not the same God that raised it? Eh? Check your life. Uh, if things are not going well today, did you do what we told you to do? I feel like you're praying with me, isn't it? Uh, Hallelujah. Uh, For example, you did, left your house. Let's talk about this mountain prayer. We are doing it. We started doing it recently here, and it was nice. Let's talk about the mountain prayer. We go there on that dust. You left your home. You are nice in your comfortability. You are praying with me because you are in agreement with me. Yes. And now you could not hear God answering your prayer. Maybe by His grace, I am the servant now. He now spoke to me and I will tell you, can you do this? When you are being told, can you do this? Don't you think that prayer has been answered? Yes. When you despise the instruction of God, you must know what to get in the future. Yes. Our suffering of today has become our rebellion, or is a result of our rebellion three years ago, two years ago, five years ago, four years ago, ten years ago. I was a victim of what I'm sharing. Praise the Lord. May God, by His grace, for those of them that are willing to start afresh, be God to the grace. For those of them that are willing to accept the instruction of God, may God give you grace. Amen. You see, Christians are disappointed. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come. This is you are not out of your name down here. Oh God, I command financial danger. I command this. I go, I'm sweating. Why must I sweat for praise? After all sweating, you are coming to church. The reason why you are still coming to church, you are still coming to church for three months after the house of visitors. The reason why you are still coming to church constantly for three months is because you want that prayer to work. Ah, uh, no longer hiding. We are, we are, are too far. I've tested so much glory to the pretending here. Uh, People, when you pray for them, a visitor can spend three months in the church, then after three months they're gone. Uh, you know why? Because whatever you have prayed did not work. It didn't take place in your life. Uh, now they will look for another choice, spend three months there, six months. If you're not working, they keep on jumping. I can pray for you, God will answer your prayers. There's no prayer God cannot answer. Uh, you came, you allowed me to pray for you, but in agreement, he will answer. But after all the 20 minutes, 30 minutes of prayer upon you, he will give me instruction to give you. Uh, Have you seen me? After this the deliverance of people, I give them instruction. Uh, they think I am just begging them for a favor. I want to be an usher. I think you're helping me. Join the choir. Can I talk about an event of God? Most of God's events are as well an answer to your prayers. You don't know that? Have you ever noticed that sometimes I will stand here and ask for somebody? They say the person is not here. Have you ever noticed that? It has happened many times. What do you think that the person has? Do you think that I even know that uh, I was, I was I even thinking about the person to be talking about the person that is not here? God tested Jeremiah, telling Jeremiah, go tell this people, they are following the instruction. In their generation, they do not bring. Now they are following the instruction of their father. 
Their father has died, forefathers has died, no generation has come to pass, remember them, and they are still following that tradition. And God said, Well, you go to give them, because God knew that they were not going to take the drink from their mind. And what happened with the whole story? Jeremiah now went and told them, Take it, God says you drink. God said, it. They refused. Our father said, We must not. Our father said, No, we cannot do this. The reality is, they listened to the voice of the generation. The way we listen to the voice of humans. The voice of people that you think that matters to you, but it doesn't matter. You don't want to accept the voice of God when He speaks. Do not pray. Did you hear me? If you don't want to be obedient to what God is saying, there's no need for you to pray. Because the more you pray, the more He tells you what to do. You want me to answer your prayer? The prayer will be answered based on Him telling you what to do. And the answer to our prayers does not come shining. It comes in a disguise. In a disguise form, in a disguise way. Hallelujah. The answer to your prayer can be you, go and give. The answer to your prayer can be you, go and fast. The answer to your prayer can be you, do ABCD. Take responsibility, take up this responsibility. If you don't want to do what God says, do not pray. Those of you that are seeking for answer to their prayers, it will come as an instruction. It will come as an instruction. If you are not willing to accept God's instruction, stop praying. If you are willing to accept God's instruction, go ahead and pray. Then we refuse to pay a price. Now you will say that when some pastors pray, God answer their prayers. Do you know why God answer their prayers? Do you know what they do? Do you know the life they live? Do you know the life they have given? Do you know the amount of their blood they have shed? Do you know what they have forfeited? Sometimes God will tell me, do this, don't do this, don't do that, don't do that. I know you never knew. For the fact that I was not around, ever since my journey with God was my difficult, the most difficult situation of my life. And somebody will think that this man was resting, enjoying himself. Sometimes I lose it. Sometimes I have to go and move around where I do not know. I lose it all the time. This last stage was the most difficult journey of my life. And I come here, you say, hey, I am coming for him to pray because God will answer. If you are coming for the pastor to pray for you, for God to answer, pastor can give instructions. He can say tell you what to do. Enough of all this, I know too much. Your education is not spirituality. Your bank account has nothing to do with purpose. Your car has nothing to do with the will of God. Your house is not an answer to the prayer based on the will of God. That house is a provision of a shelter. Your car is a provision to help you in your journey. The money in your bank account is that which will sustain you for the body, for the Lord, flesh and blood to live so that the will of God will be fulfilled in the land of the living. And there you are. You think you have everything. Why is that you think you have everything, but yet you do not have peace? Ask yourself that question. If God has spoken to you, if God will still speak to you, may He bless His word in your life and in Jesus Christ.